Thank you, Professor Foster. Hello, Professor Foster's and junior guests, welcome. Wow, I'm speaking tonight. It's at 12 o'clock today. I didn't know I was. So I'm on the spot. You know the phrase, more in hope than expectation? It may apply to me tonight, but we shall see. Give it the best shot, as always. Now then, vocal variety. You're not too loud. You're not so quiet. We can't hear you. You're so, so, so fast, the words will tumble up each other. And we don't speak in such a laid back manner. We sound like Sir Clement Freud on tranquilizers. <laughs> right, let's give us some examples from the past of people who have fallen into what appears to be error from our sentence. Rule of three, Dave. I should give you three examples. He's taught me a lot, has Dave. <laughs> well done. He, he teaches, I learn. There was a girl at school called Margaret Soper, and she was one of those people who didn't need a telephone to speak to anyone. I remember at an activity play in the quiet, mystical magic of Christmas. She said to the shepherds who'd come into the, into the <coughs> holy nativity scene, keep quiet, you'll wake the baby. Do as I, do as I say, not do as I do, in other words. So that's an example of the wrong sort of vocal production. Does anyone remember watching the racing on BBC television? Many years ago, there was a commentator called <coughs> Michael O'Hare. Do you remember him, anyone? Michael O'Hare? Ah, I'm showing my age, am I? <laughs> and the only words I ever understood of his were, and I quote, and they're off, <laughs> as they started the race. Thereafter, it was <laughs> until, it, until they passed the, the line. So it can't too fast. What's the opposite of too fast? Too slow. Yes, well done, Richard. At least someone's listening. <laughs> <laughs> too slow. I talked about Sir Clement Freud on Dragon Liners. We had a deputy head at school who was called Mr. Barker. Now, anyone remember a thing on television, ITV, called Five O'Clock Club? That may test your memories. And there were two characters, precursors, if you like, of Basil Brush. There were two sort of puppet characters fronting it. One was an owl called Ollie Beak, and the other was a dog called, logically enough, Fred Barker. <laughs> now, our headmaster at school, affectionately known, or known of sheer terror, as the Beak, was Ollie Beak, and Poor Mr. Barker, with that sort of odd, quirky, teenage schoolboy humour, was called Fred. Now, Fred Barker did talk like Sir Clement Freud. His voice went so low, you would think he was going out of his boots. <laughs> and he talked that all the time, not just for effect, all the time. Imagine conversation between him and his wife. <laughs> what would you like for dinner this evening, darling? <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> A boiled egg would be raw, <laughs> <laughs> And that was Mr. That's Fred and Ollie. So we've had examples of the wrong sort of vocal variety. So now let me tell you a story of a happy event tinged with panic. My own life. My own life of late has been a sandwich, if you like. Happiness with my nephew's wedding, sadness with my mother's illness and my dad's death, and now up again because I am aka Bulgaria, great uncle, because my nephew and his wife, or his wife, to be precise, <coughs> has produced their first child, mum's first great grandchild. Oh, that's ageing in a way, it's one of those anno domini moments. You think, well, as someone said, time is flying. 
try and possibly ever know. But anyway, I will tell you the story of how I went to my nephew's wedding. And I thought I got all, all cracked. I definitely went, poured myself a cup of coffee and fell asleep. Losing an hour. <coughs> and for two hours I thought I had to get there. <gasps> God. Got to the local street station and phoned mum and she asked, which platform will your train go from? And I said, oh, I don't know. Mum says, it's normally the one near the tie rack. And I thought, oh my God, I haven't brought a tie with me. Going to a wedding without a tie. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is, even in these <coughs> formal days, this is, oh, a shame. You didn't go to a wedding without your tie, did you? Oh, oh. Yes, Mum, sorry. So I provided for my brother-in-law to let me on his ties. And I thought, I must make a donation to charity. For him helping me out. So there they are. Happy day. Drinks in the garden afterwards. We think to ourselves, will this happiness last? Does it last or no? Don't go northern. Last, last, this last. Will the happiness last? And it doesn't. But future happiness comes. I took the curve, the sandwich. Happy, sad, happy. No doubt we'll go in cycles, as life does. That will be an inspirational thought which will keep us through the hard times with the good times to come. And Toastmasters is a question of rising to challenges, is it not? Whether it gets us anywhere, whether I'm the next PM or whatever, doesn't matter. Mm. I'm speaking in a manner that I would not have spoken even a year ago. So, there we are. A speech with sufficient vocal variety for my evaluator to say, not to say, what a load of rubbish. Anyway, thank you. <laughs>